The concept of Amazons could theoretically have been formed from the Iranian Hamazon warriors. If in the similar-sounding Greek phrase amazos, the particle, a is considered to be amplifying, then this phrase can be roughly translated as buxom. There is a very common version that the word Amazons is formed from the Greek amazos with a negative particle, a that is, without breasts. It is believed that the Amazons cut off their right breasts or even burn them out to shoot arrows more freely. In fact, this is a myth. In ancient paintings, Amazons were always depicted with a pair of breasts. Sometimes one of them was covered with clothes. There are many other variants of the origin of the word Amazons. For example, masso, from masso, to touch, to touch, can mean not to touch, to men. By the way, the word maza, moon, has been preserved in the North Caucasian languages, which may be an echo of that distant time when the inhabitants of this region deified the moon, the goddess of hunting, corresponding to the Greek Artemis. By the way, the consonance of the warriors with the Amazon River in South America is not accidental. Only this river was named after them. The Amazon was discovered by the conquistador Francisco de Orellana. He was the first European to cross South America in its widest part. In the summer of 1542, a group of pioneers allegedly saw the legendary Amazons with whom they engaged in battle. Today, it is believed that these were either Indian women who fought side by side with men, or just long-haired Indians whom the Spaniards mistook for women. Initially, de Orellana wanted to name the river after himself, but after the skirmish, he settled on the Amazon option. For the ancient Greeks, the Amazons were no less real than any other inhabitants of the northern lands. The sources of those times contain a lot of information about the Amazons, of course, mostly fictional. Some of them claim that the Amazons allegedly lived on the coast of the Euxine Pontus, Black Sea, in their own state under the rule of Queen Hippolyta. The latter became legendary thanks to Hercules. It was from her that he had to steal the magic belt, having accomplished the ninth feat. Herodotus in his history reports that the capital of the Amazons was called Themyscira, and it stood on the banks of the Firmadon River, south of the Black Sea, modern Turkey. There is a version according to which the Amazons came to Greece from the Meotian Lake, that is, from the Sea of Azov. From there, they made military campaigns throughout Asia Minor, even reaching Syria and Egypt. According to legends, the Amazons founded cities such as Ephesus, Smyrna, now Turkish Izmir, Sinope, and Paphos. Diodorus Siculus believed that the Amazons lived on the Tanais River, modern Don. She was named after the Amazon's son Lysippus, who fell in love with his mother and threw himself into the river to escape criminal incest. All legends agree that Amazonian society was a gynecocratic ethnos, a nation dominated by women and where there was no place for men. The famous Greek geographer Strabo wrote that once a year the Amazons raided the Caucasian tribe of the Gargars, ancestors of the Ingush and Chechens, with a very specific purpose, to conceive children from them. Boys born from such a union were at best returned to their fathers and at worst killed. Girls were taught to work in the fields, hunt and fight. Thus, new representatives of the tribe of warlike women were born. Based on all of the above, we can conclude that blonde Amazons are the invention of artists. Considering ways to prolong their kind, the ancient warriors in their classical understanding should have had a typically oriental appearance. Amazons figure in a variety of overtly masculine legends. According to legend, they successfully fought with Phrygia and Libya, attacked Lycia, but were defeated by the ancient Greek hero Bellerophon, tamer of the legendary Pegasus. The Lycian king Ibbot sent the young hero to battle with the Amazons, secretly hoping that Bellerophon would die. However, the plans of the treacherous ruler were not destined to come true. The Amazons also took part in the Trojan War and on the side of Troy. Legend tells how Hippolyta, ruler of the Amazons, was accidentally killed by her sister Pemphysilia while hunting. Tormented by remorse, the new ruler decided to commit suicide as befits a real Amazon that is in battle. The sortie she organized against the Greeks was initially successful, but then Achilles intervened in the battle, which knocked Penthesilea off her horse and pierced her with a spear. The military power of the Amazon state was so great that they easily besieged Athens and even broke into the city itself when Theseus, who ruled there, kidnapped their queen Antiope, more precisely. She got to him as a trophy during Hercules' campaign for Hippolyta's belt. However, after a while, Antiope fell in love with Theseus and was not at all eager to return to her native senates. During the battle, Antiope fought on the side of her lover and was accidentally killed by her tribesmen, after which the confrontation between the Amazons and the Athenians came to naught. The battle of the inhabitants of Athens with the Amazons gave rise to a separate genre of ancient Greek art, the so-called 
Amazonomachy, that is, the tradition of depicting militant Amazons on the battlefield, drawings on terracotta, marble carvings. Over time, there are fewer and fewer mentions of Amazons. During the life of Alexander the Great, there were rumors that one day the Queen of the Amazons Thelestris arrived at the camp of the great commander with 300 tribeswomen. Allegedly, Thelestris wanted to offer all this considerable harem to Alexander in order to get from the eminent ruler as many offspring as possible, girls as strong and intelligent as their father. The Roman commander Aeneas Pompey wrote about the Amazons who fought as part of enemy troops, and Virgil in his poem, Aeneid, clearly copied the Volscian. Volscian people who opposed Rome, warrior Camilla from the ancient Amazons. The main weapon of the Amazons was considered to be Sagaris, the Scythian name for the double-edged axe, known to the Greeks as Polectus or Labris. The latter was widespread on the island of Crete back in the Bronze Age, three millennia BC, symbolizing the feminine principle. In addition to the battle axe, the Amazons actively used bows with arrows and small spears, a typical Scythian set. They rarely fought on foot, the striking force of their army was cavalry, which also cannot but suggest the Scythian tribes. Golden Laris is a symbol of the Minoan culture, island of Crete, 2nd millennium BC. Where did the legends about Amazons come from? Are these vague memories of those archaic times when people lived under the matriarchy or of the really existing female peoples of the ancient era? There are many theories put forward in this regard. The Amazons were called the daughters of Ares and the maids of Artemis, and this suggests that their prototype could be a closed community of temple servants. In this context, the mythical moxibustion of the breasts can be interpreted as the infliction of ritual mutilation. In early examples of Greek painting, Amazons wore helmet and long tunics, revealing similarities to the warlike goddess Athena. Later, their clothes became more refined and light, highly belted, to facilitate running, that is, copying the style of the goddess of hunting Artemis. The Greek origin of the Amazons is also confirmed by the fact that in battle they usually used a small shield, pelta, which had the shape of a crescent. In the most recent images of the Amazons, they are depicted dressed in the Persian manner in tight trousers and a high-pointed headdress, Kideris. Mythical stories about Amazons directly connect them with two heroes, Hercules and Theseus. Since the latter often dealt with fictional creatures, by analogy it can be assumed that the Amazons were also a figment of fantasy. It is likely that they symbolized the dangers that the Greek colonists had to face on the Black Sea coast. Given the alleged homeland of the Amazons, the Don Steppes, and the coast of the Sea of Azov, the Asian theory of their origin looks the most likely. The Greeks who settled in the Black Sea region were constantly faced with warlike and semi-savage nomads. Herodotus explicitly stated that the Sarmatians were descendants of the Amazons and Scythians. Until recently, this was the case. Scientists considered the Amazons to be artistic fiction, emphasizing the uniqueness of the steppe barbarians in the eyes of the Greeks. However, in the late 20th and early 21st centuries, the situation changed. First, large female graves were found in northern Turkey in the province of Samsun, and then Kuban archaeologists excavated the graves of an entire tribe in Taman. Only women were buried there. Incredibly, there were weapons lying next to their bodies, bows, quivers and daggers, and an arrow tip protruded from the skull of one of the dead. These findings prove that in the northern Black Sea region, if not completely female tribes lived, then at least they preserved the ancient way of life when a woman played a major role in society. However, it is unlikely that these Amazons formed those close type communities that the Greeks talked about. Cruelty towards men has also probably been exaggerated. People from different types of cultures tend to create similar legends about a land where life is radically different from their own. Anyway, these tribal alliances were few and unstable. The old traditions of matriarchy, miraculously preserved until the new era, could not resist the campaigns of Alexander the Great, the mixing of cultures, and the great migration of peoples in the 3rd and 7th centuries. That's when the Amazons, a unique blend of half-truth and half-fantasy, ceased to exist. Strangely enough, militant women were in great demand at all times and on all continents. For example, King Chandragupta Maurya, 322-328 BC, who for the first time united a part of India into a centralized state, had a very unusual guard, a Greek giantess woman. Almost 2,000 years later, the rulers of the divided Indian states resorted to this practice, for example, the Nizam's kings of Hyderabad. It is known that the royal family of Kandy in Sri Lanka was guarded by a small army of female archers. In Europe, women from Celtic and Germanic tribes often fought side by side with their husbands. 
Roman historian Cornelius Tacitus says that there were more women than men in the army of Boudicca, the legendary queen of the Iceni tribe, who raised Britain to revolt against the Romans in 60 BC. In the Scandinavian countries, there was an interesting custom according to which a woman, unencumbered by a family, could take up arms and become a maiden with a shield. The Hervéer saga tells the story of one such girl who dressed like a man and fought under the male name Jorvert. Herver practiced necromancy and raised her dead father from the mound so that he would give her the magic sword Durfing. It is noteworthy that the dwarves who made this weapon put a curse on it, any use of it will lead to the death of at least one person, and in due time this sword will cause three great misfortunes. The Danish historian Saxon Grammaticus wrote that in the Battle of Braveler, about 750, about 300, maidens with a shield, fought on the side of the ladder between the troops of the Swedish king Sigurd Ring and the Danish king Harald Gildetand. Saxon specifically notes that their shields were small and their swords were long. Armed women who kept their gender a secret from others are often found in European chivalric epics. The most famous female knight is Bradamante, the sister of the famous knight Renaud de Montalban. Her adventures became part of two of the most important poems of the Italian Renaissance, Orlando and Love, by Count Matteo Maria Boiardo, 1495, and its sequel, Furious Orlando, by Ludovico Ariosto, 1516. It is believed that it is from these stories that the legs of all modern fantasy grow. King Ahohag Baha, the third ruler of Dahomey, modern Benin, Africa, from 1645 to 1685, and his son Dosu Agaja, who ruled from 1708 to 1732, created a powerful army with which they were able to capture neighboring kingdoms and form a large state that existed until the 19th century. The core of Dahomey's armed forces were well-trained royal bodyguards recruited from women. Their numbers gradually increased, and by the beginning of the 19th century it was already a third of the army, about 6,000 people. The Dahomey Amazons, as the Europeans called them, were the military elite, the most powerful military formation in all of Africa. Dahomey, an active slave trader, had an astronomical annual income of a quarter of a million pounds. Some of this money was spent on military needs. In particular, the Dahomey Amazons were armed with incredibly expensive British rifles. The Amazons received special training and wore their own uniforms. They were forbidden to marry and have children, many of them were virgins. Their army had a complex structure and was divided into ranks and its discipline bordered on cruelty. In 1890, after long and bloody battles, the French Foreign Legion conquered Dahomey and the Amazon army was disbanded. The last of them died in 1979. During one of his voyages, Christopher Columbus learned from the Indians about the islands inhabited only by women. He wanted to catch a few to show them to the Spanish queen. But this idea failed when Columbus's sailors tried to land, they were met by a crowd of angry furies decorated with feathers and armed with bows. The Europeans retreated and the famous discoverer decided to call these islands the Virgin Islands, that is, the Islands of the Maidens. In the 19th century, Frenchman Jules Crivo discovered a village in the Amazon jungle where only women lived. However, in reality, they turned out to be wives rejected by their husbands. According to the customs of those tribes, such poor fellows were settled in one village. During the reign of Emperor Nero, one of the constant amusements of the Romans was the fights of female gladiators. According to Tacitus, even noble ladies entered the arena. Despite the superstition about the woman on the ship in the 18th and 19th centuries, Wives often sailed with their husbands on English and French warships. During the battle, they carried gunpowder to the guns, put out fires, and helped doctors. The process of softening the image of Amazons is quite logical. After all, if you look at the truth, angry, aggressive, and introverted women are not created by nature, but by men. We must never forget that justice is a woman with a sword.